The London Ride is an urban free skiing competition which consists primarily of a big air kicker. It's a really, really cool indoor competition and with a nice jump, um, some rails and a lot of things what you can see there. The competition is a bigger competition, so we were about 20 riders, uh, four runs and best count. It's a pretty sick competition, the sun of the ride is amazing, like, got all the Frenchies just killing it. It's really good for the crowd. It's these French guys going mental. On est venu à Londres pour le London Ride. C'est un contest de big air artificiel en intérieur. C'est un bon événement, c'est cool. Bonne ambiance. British guys are showing them how the ride and stuff doing some pretty good stuff. It's very cool because the competition is on two days. So uh, yeah, it's cool. If you miss, you know, the first day. Maybe you can be better, you know, in the second day, so uh, yeah, it's cool. The London Ride's got a little edge because it's great for an athlete to be able to come and check out an urban, uh, urban town, urban city, and ski at the same time. It has a kind of a twist to it, um, which I know athletes are very fond of. Doing events in cities and indoors is a great thing because uh, people that normally wouldn't get to see what we're doing get to see it, even though that it's not as big as what we normally do. All the people in the UK who come to the show get so excited about seeing again especially when you see the world's best skiers, you know, battling it out for big money in London. It's wicked. It was cool, we ski a little bit in the city, and that's nice. You know, to ride in London, that's uh, very different, and uh, so, yeah, that's why it's cool. The ride has become such a big event, it's like, just throughout the summer, everyone goes to Saturday, it just becomes a Verbier ride, everyone's there. It's just getting bigger and bigger every single year. Well, the London Ride fits into the Ride series of events as the urban edition. It's the third in our year. We start off with the Verbia Ride, then the Sasfe Ride, and the London Ride is the last of the 2005 events. And we're attracting the world's best skiers, and what's the most amazing thing, it's run by British people, and it's keeping the UK scene up there. And we're attracting all these young kids now, we're doing it, we're coaching them up on the British free ski camps, they're doing the ride series, they're competing with the world's best, and this is the best thing that's ever happened to the UK industry in skiing. In free skiing is just fantastic. The London Ride takes place with the Daily Mail Ski and Snowboard Show. And the Ski and Snowboard Show is uh, the UK's retail industry show. Um, during the week there's about 50,000 people that pass through the show. It's great for the athletes because rather than just having a, a few hundred people watching them in a competition, they get three or four thousand people crowding around to watch them uh, perform their tricks. And as all riders would agree, that if you've got an, an audience and spectators, that can really uh, amp up the atmosphere. It can really make them push their level a little bit further. So all in all, it's the perfect, uh, perfect location because uh, both people benefit, the athletes and the spectators. The media and the press are going there anyway because it's a ski show. You know, brands are launching their, their latest ski models. Uh, you know, shops are there promoting what they've got to sell. And it's just a general, it's a good atmosphere. It kind of kickstarts the, uh, the winter season in the UK. So um, the Daily Mail Ski and Snowboard Show is definitely the best location for the London ride. This year the competition's got the format where it's best out of four jumps, you get four jumps and your best one simply counts. What we feel this is going to do is one, be better for the riders because it means that there won't be a knockout on the first day, the Saturday, so all riders are going to get a chance to jump both days. It takes the pressure off, it makes it more of a fun event. It's better if the riders feel that they've got a bit of a cushion so they can express maybe their more risky tricks that they wouldn't necessarily always land. From last year's competition at the London Ride we were seeing guys throw down sevens and fives uh, this year, I presume they're going to be pushing their limit a little bit further. The some riders have been talking about maybe going switch for a switch seven. I see a lot of lot of good tricks like cork sevens, misty fives, cork five, switch cork uh, seven. Set some uh, 
Kopfsitz of a Rodeo 5. Rodeo 5, double grab. Cock 9, peel. Try and plant it. Cab 9, and it's good. It's not big enough for them to go huge, um, to create you know, massive size jumps. So they've got to take that into consideration. Generally in big air, judges are looking for amplitude, which is just how big you go. Like if someone clears the whole landing and stomps on the flat at the bottom, then obviously that's a big air. As with all the right events, there's a big emphasis on style, not necessarily going off the jump and trying to spin as far as you can. For me, style is if you can make the rotation smooth so that you take off and you start your spin and you don't accelerate that spin or have to suddenly throw an arm around to get it around so the spin's set well. To get more style, you have just to, uh, to control the rotation. I mean, not to do too much spin. Just, you know, 540, it's, uh, it's good. It's more styly than a 900 or something on a small run like that. And then after that, you're looking at the grab, like whether they make a grab. And then once they've made the grab, do they tweak it? Which is, uh, for example, if you're doing a mute or something, then you grab the ski and then pull it across. Most important, I think, it was the, the landing. Uh, if you just crash, it doesn't work. <laughs> Sure. And they like to see a nice control, stable landing, no putting hands down, literally stomping the landings really strongly. You can see somebody do a cart seven and it's like wow, and then somebody will come up and do a backflip and they go crazy, you know, because people just like people going totally inverted. It's a bit of fun and it's really mad how the public see it. And it's hard to teach them how difficult these tricks are that what they're doing. It's super hard to judge, so it's, the judges has to be really, really on it and really look for the style. Because of the level of the London Rides publicity and promotion and television um, and also the prize money that goes with it, we're attracting international athletes into the competition. We've got some of the top riders coming along like Laurent Favre and, uh, and all of the French crew. My name is Alex Simoudon, I'm, uh, I live in Châtel, France. I'm Fabien mayer and I'm from uh, Les Menuires in France. Je m'appelle Arnaud Rougier et je viens de Tignes, en Savoie. Loïc Colombaton, j'habite à La Clusa en France. Laurent Thévenet, j'ai 19 ans, j'habite à La Clusa en France. My name is uh, Laurent Favre, I'm living in La Clusa in France. Laurent Favre is pretty much the best guy in France at the moment. He goes just before me, so it's quite nerve-wracking for me. Lauren Favre is just coming down, just killing it every single time, there's so much style. I see a lot of him in magazines and it's really new for me to stand on the start with those guys, they are normally are my heroes. He's one of the European riders who is able you know, to, to go to the States and win competition, which is a very, very uh, big thing you know, in the freestyle world. Hey, my name is Henrik Arlo. I'm 14 years old and I come from Bore, Sweden. Uh, Henrik, 14 years old, 
really impressed about him. It's like, yeah, what you do, what you do. And I said, yeah, I tried a 1080, but he's, oh, you know where 1080? Oh, I think you're gonna win with that unit. <laughs> Lord Banks. He's a little gangster kid, you know, a little kid from uh, from my hometown. So I've seen him ski around, and you know, I've known that. He's gonna do really well, so it's cool to see see him out here in London. This kid is insane. He's just like he's getting so good. Like I, I saw him last year and uh, last summer he went and it was so good. He was just like doing like some sick tricks and it was funny. He has a nice style and uh, yeah, I think it will be very very good, you know, in the future in, uh, in the next years. The best trick that I saw today was from the 14 year old youngster Henrik from Sweden. This uh, D spin 9 tail grab was amazing, perfect. Tomorrow, maybe I don't really want to get this, this competition to a spin to win competition, but I try to get stylish, sure. Yeah, the kicker that was made for the Daily Mail Ski and Snowboard Show and the London Ride. It took five days to build and, and it was an investment of £160,000, so it was, it was quite a big thing. 200 tonnes of snow had to be made to keep the, uh, the kicker operational because obviously it was real snow for the athletes to land on and take off from. The big air jump on the ride is really, really good, considering it's an indoor venue. It's not massive, but it's got a fair amount of height on it and we'll see a lot of different tricks. But You've got to sling your tricks pretty hard, but um, you actually get more air time than we had last year. I was a little bit scared before because the in-run was first is mat and then it gets to snow, but it's no problem. And you can use your, yet, your, your edge for, for spin or things like that, yeah, just to go straight on and, uh, and push in the kicker, you know, to go higher. On a bigger outdoor kicker, you do have sort of a wide takeoff, so you can carve up and set your rotation to a court quite easily. Whilst on this kicker, the takeoff is actually quite thin, and so you do have to set it slightly different, and you can't carve, you have to go straight off and, in a sense, just look down over your shoulder much quicker instead of the carving action. Especially when you're taking off switch, you tend to edge slightly on takeoff, um, so it's going to be quite hard for them to hug big, big switch spins, I'd say. Riding a switch is on this jump is very, very difficult. For a start, the running's very steep, and it's also, the running is quite thin. It's a little bit scary, but you've just got to, it's all in the head, it's technically not that hard. You've just got to just not think about it and just go do it. You've got to be able to do everything. If you can't do that, then you may as well just go home. You, you can't just say, oh, I only ski on snow. You've got to be able to do this as well. That's, you know, it's hardcore, you've got to do it. The difference between this kicker and like a normal snow kicker is just the atmosphere, like you've got a huge crowd at the bottom watching you, cheering you on. And the atmosphere for the rider looking down at that audience is just the view and the perspective of seeing that kind of audience is, is, is amazing. It's definitely got that kind of pop star feel to it and, and I think the riders feel that when they're about to go off the kicker. It's just something that's there that's super fun and uh, you know, pushes you. So yeah, you know, it's, it's a great thing skiing indoors in front of a big crowd.
The Rail event's not a judged event, it's a, it's a jamming session. Um, so it's something that's not going to be uh, taken into account as part of the judge score for the London ride. There's a straight down rail and there's a kind of like a roller coaster box rail. It's really an area for people to go to, to hang out, chill out, uh, watch each other's and ladies tricks, have a bit of banter, a bit of fun with each other and the general public can watch the riders off guard, you know, watch them just chilling out in their own environment. Rails is a really evolving area in skiing and it's something that we feature in the other ride events. We obviously can't have the magnitude or the size of what we get in the Alps but it's enough to show the general public where the sport's at at the moment, and that's a really good thing. The atmosphere from the riders is really, really cool. It's like talking about the tricks, what you did. It's like stoked, yeah, you did that trick, and yeah, what you can do nicer. And the better rider gives you tips how you can do it better. And the versatile riders like me is <laughs> taking the tips and will try it. I see with them. It's like we have so much fun. I mean, because like uh, every time we were just like yelling, it's like ah, do it, do that, try that. And every time he was falling, it was like are oh, you so bad, oh, you suck. And, and he, every time he just went, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I don't know why they are so stoked about him, but I think he was a bit scared, he told me, from these rails. But he was so pushed from the other riders that he tried all rails there and tried new tricks also. And that's also like a thing, they're pushing each other and bring you forward. So that's why we push him, like, to get, because we want him to get better and better. Uh, I just know that uh, my friends from France just mock at me a lot. Uh, that is not fair. But uh, next time, the position will be, you know, reverse. <laughs> Revenge. Revenge, sure, sure, definitely, yes.
in joint third place. Put your hands together for Float Visor. Let's hear it for Fabio Mayhopper. Tonight, 1,500 euros. Put your hands together for Lolo Fabian Mayhofer with his uh, Switch Core 7. Um, it's set exactly the same trick as Lolo. He went for the same grab as well, the reverse mute. You can see as he as he grabs the ski, he doesn't uh, he does tweak it a bit, but it's mainly with his arm. He just sort of pulls it with his arm. Other than that, I don't think he went quite as big as Laurel, so he didn't land quite as far down the, the runway. Um, so it was a great technical manoeuvre, deserved to come third, definitely. But um, that were the differences between the, uh, from, from my point of view and the, definitely the judges' point of view. One thing Flo showed the judges throughout the comp was he was going really big, you know, really, really big with his air. It was considerably different to everybody else in the competition. He got a 1080, but he did it with a grab, it was tweaked out. Uh, and that was a really quite an amazing thing to do on a slope like that. It was a ballsy jump and, and pretty well executed to be honest, so yeah, fully deserved third place I think. Number two uh, was Henrik Harrio. He did a switch nine and uh, that's a, such a sick race for a small jump like that. He did it with style and that was the most important thing. It wasn't a scruffy attempt at a nine, it was a really technical manoeuvre and, and a technical jump. He really did a good jump today and I'm really, I'm really stoked about him. The winning jump was Laura Favre with the Switch Court 7. I mean Lolo definitely had the most style with a really very technically difficult manoeuvre. And when he went for his grab, it wasn't just grabbing his ski, he, he really pulled and tweaked his grab. So there's more definition of, uh, of the cross of his skis. Um, and that's why Lolo really had to win. I don't know if he's broken, but I try to do my best with my, uh, my shoulders. So I'm really stoked. Next year, for the first time already, we have the dates of next year's competition, um, which is the 20th of October, as part, again, of, of the Daily Mail Ski and Snowboard Show. The future for freestyle skiing is really, really bright right now. I mean, the athletes are training harder, looking more professional, the sport's getting more funding, more TV time. And the ride events, and uh, yeah, especially the London ride, is going to be a great way of showcasing exactly what the future of freestyle skiing is going to be.